Have you ever considered tsunamis incredible power and how they can devastate entire coastlines in minutes? Massive waves the size of multi-story buildings aren't just the stuff of disaster movies. They are a real and present danger, and knowing how to recognize and respond to them quickly can save your life. In this video, we'll delve deep into the science of tsunamis, investigating what causes them and how they form, as well as providing some crucial tips on how to stay safe if you ever find yourself in their path. So strap in for an eye-opening journey into the heart of one of nature's most amazing phenomena. The most dangerous aspect of a tsunami is its unexpectedness. It's no surprise that tsunami means wave in the harbor in Japanese. It is said to have been invented by fishermen. When they return with their catch, they discovered that their ports had been destroyed by a massive wave they had not seen. Tsunamis in the open ocean are typically no more than three feet high. However, in terms of length, that is, the distance between the ridges, they can range from 60 to 100 miles. That's at least a thousand times the size of normal waves, and their speed is comparable to that of a jet plane. Tsunamis grow to incredible proportions only along the coasts. How do you spot a looming danger, and how does the ocean create such powerful waves? The wind has nothing to do with it, as it does with ordinary waves. A short, powerful impulse from beneath pushes the mass of water, causing a large-scale sharp shift in the ocean. An earthquake, volcanic eruption, landslide, explosion, the collapse of rocks and glaciers, or asteroids impacting the water could be the cause. However, seismic activity is the primary cause in 88% of cases. Unlike a regular wave, the driving energy of a tsunami travels through the water rather than on top of it. So for 95% of a tsunami's life cycle, it is invisible to the naked eye, and only at the end does it reach the surface. Take a deep breath and join me as we dive deep into the heart of these events, to the point at which the Earth's lithospheric plates shift. The tremor is nearly eight points, indicating that a tsunami cannot be avoided. Part of the seafloor rises as a result of the shock, while another falls, and the ocean begins to oscillate vertically, causing a series of waves to form. It is safe to sail above the epicenter of this earthquake. The height of the waves pounding on its sides is approximately half of 1.6 feet, but everything in the ocean's depths is trembling from the bottom to the surface. Consider the massive amount of water that is now rushing to the coast, and its speeds ranging from 250 to 550 miles per hour. In some cases, speeds of up to 620 miles per hour are possible. What will you see from the water's edge? If you're expecting a killer wave, as in disaster movies, you might not be prepared for what actually happens, and you will almost certainly die, transfixed by the unusual behavior of the water. Before a tsunami, the water often recedes, exposing the coast to the land settling at the earthquake's location. So the worst thing you can do right now is start collecting seashells and animals. Many people have done this when confronted with a tsunami for the first time. Meanwhile, off the coast, a portion of the wave slows to 30 miles per hour, and the remaining water mass begins to rise as a result of the congestion. The higher the crest, the deeper the ocean, and the larger the tsunami, the further the water recedes. But now that you know why this strange behavior is occurring, you can warn others of the impending disaster, as English schoolgirl Tilly Smith did in 2004 off the coast of the Indian Ocean. She had recently learned in geography class that water quickly retreats from the shore before a tsunami. Tilly persuaded her parents and everyone else that they needed to save themselves, and as a result, she assisted over a hundred people. Remember that you must act quickly. Despite slowing, the wave speed is still tens of miles per hour when it reaches the shore. So, you have a maximum of about 20 minutes from the time an alarm is sounded or a tsunami appears on the horizon. Spend it traveling, six miles inland. If that isn't an option, try climbing up onto a roof or a sturdy tree. A car isn't always the best option. You don't want to be stuck in traffic with everyone else fleeing the elements, do you? If you find yourself in water, the first thing you should do is remove your heavy shoes and clothing. 
you could easily be hit by debris and carried into the ocean, and escaping in such clothing would be extremely difficult. Also, don't rush back to the danger zone once the water has receded. Residents of the Soviet city of Severokorolsk did this during a tsunami in 1952. As a result, those who survived the first wave were swept away by the second wave, which was about 49 to 59 feet tall. Unfortunately, this is not uncommon. There are multiple waves, and the first isn't always the largest. The next may not arrive for another two to three hours, and it will not encounter any obstacles. The first wave clears the path, sweeping away cars, trees, and property. The second one transports everything back, destroying buildings and anything in its path. This is precisely what occurred in Severokorolsk. Tremors began around 4 a.m. When the morning fog lifted, the only remnants of the city on the shore were fragments floating in the water. As a result, you won't be able to take a breath until three to four hours after the final attack. But don't think that noticing the strange behavior of the water in time is enough to save you, because it does not always recede before a tsunami. Relying solely on this indicator is insufficient. Tsunami warning centers will have the most up-to-date information about the threat. Seismic waves, on the other hand, move much faster than normal waves. And an alert from such a center saves coastal residents a few minutes. If the source of the earthquake is far from the coast, it can take hours. However, not all powerful underwater quakes cause tsunamis. The most accurate forecast will be provided by an increase in water level in a specific area of the sea or ocean. It's also critical that the measuring points alarm sounds no later than the wave itself. While we're talking about underwater earthquakes, don't dismiss other causes of tsunamis. In Alaska, for example, the world's largest tsunami ever occurred. The mountains dropped 90 million tons of rock and ice into a bay. Water shot 1,720 feet into the air. A wave ripped through the bay, ripping down trees and tossing one ship across the island, which was 6.2 miles from the epicenter. In the 19th century, the tsunami caused by the eruption of the Indonesian volcano Krakatoa destroyed thousands of ships and killed tens of thousands of people. Despite this, volcanoes are only responsible for about 5% of such disasters, according to statistics. Killer waves can be created not only by nature, but also by humans. For example, in the mid-20th century, an underwater atomic bomb was detonated. A deep explosion lifted a wave 95 feet high. However, there was no damage. It calmed down after breaking 980 feet. Asteroids with a diameter of more than 0.6 miles falling into the water are the most unusual cause of tsunamis. According to one theory, the Chicxulub asteroid, with a diameter of 7 to 50 miles and a crater 12 miles deep, was responsible for the extinction of the dinosaurs. Due to the release of dust into the atmosphere, it deprived the Earth of sunlight and caused a tsunami 46 feet to one mile high. These waves swept across the globe, upheaving the oceans. The most lethal was the previously mentioned tsunami near the Indonesian island of Sumatra in 2004. It affected 14 countries and killed over 200,000 people. The energy released by the earthquake was the equivalent to 20,000 atomic bombs, similar to the one dropped on Hiroshima. If you planned a future vacation but are suddenly hesitant, don't rush to cancel it. To begin with, the Pacific Ocean area known as the Ring of Fire poses the greatest risk of tsunamis. Second, in terms of small waves, they typically occur no more than four times per year. Only once every decade are record holders with a height of 30 feet born. Have you ever been in the path of a tsunami or other natural disaster? Tell us in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, click the bell to receive notifications of new videos, and don't forget to tell your friends about us.